Hello friends! In today's video, we are going to learn another hardware peripherals of microcontroller, which is a UART serial in MicroPython. UART is useful for interfacing devices such as DF Player Mini MP3 Player Module or a SIM800L GSM Module or an HC 06 Bluetooth module and etc. which basically needs serial communication as mode of control. ESP32 has three hardware UART serial ports available which are port 0, port 1, and port 2. Port 0 is connected to GPIO 1 and 3. It is generally used to communicate with the ESP32 for flashing and during the reset event. In MicroPython, it is reserved for the default repo. In this development board, which I have, it is accessible through the general purpose breadboard pins. This is usable when you disabled the default serial repo and use the web repo instead. Port 1 is connected to GPIO 9 and 10. It is unused, but it is usually used for SPI flash memory access. In this version of ESP32 development board, it is not routed to any general purpose breadboard pins. Lastly, the port 2. It is connected to GPIO 16 and 17. It is unused and it is routed to the general purpose breadboard pins. The UART's TX and RX pin can be reassigned to other GPIO pins by setting the RX and TX parameters in UART object creation or in object init initialization. Later on, I will demonstrate to you on how to do that. For the hardware part, I use a USB to serial converter. I am using this opto isolated module, but any USB to serial converter should work. The RX pin of USB to serial converter is connected to GPIO 17. The TX pin of USB to serial converter is connected to GPIO 16, which are dedicated hardware serial TX and RX pins of UART. Port 2. The BCC pin of USB to serial converter is connected to ESP32 3.3 volts, while the ground pins are commonly connected. For more details regarding the circuit connection, you may refer to the circuit diagram posted. For the software part, UART is a class under the machine module. So, let's import it by calling import machine. Now let's create an object named UART in small letters. And let's use the UART class from machine module using machine.uart in capital letters. In its parameters, let's just write 2. This parameter is the UART port ID number. For ESP32, it can be 0, 1, and 2 only. Let's set the baud rate to 115,200 bits per second. Now our UART object is now ready. Let's open any serial terminal. In my case, I will use a termite serial terminal. Make sure that the correct COM port number is selected by going to the device manager, right click, device manager, and in device manager, click the ports, and under the ports, COM3 is the USB to serial converter, while COM4 is the ESP32 UART bridge. So now, let's set the COM3 and 115 by clicking the settings button. 
in under the port, select COM3. And in the baud rate, select 115,200 baud rate. I also use the append, carriage return, and line feed. Select OK. First, let's query our UART object by sending UART. It means that our UART object is created a UART class. Number two is the port ID number. This is the baud rate set to 115,200. It uses 8 bits for its character with no parity. With one stop bit, TX pin is set to 17. This is the default. RX pin is set to 16, GPIO 16. RTS is set to negative 1. It means RTS is not used. And also the CTS. TX buffer is set to 256 and the RX buffer is the same. Timeout is equal to 0. Is the timeout in milliseconds to wait for writing or reading the first character. Timeout car is set to 1. Is the timeout in milliseconds to wait between characters while writing or reading. To transmit data, use uart.write Let's say hello Let's send And as you can see, hello string is displayed in the termite serial terminal To receive a data, let's send a message from the termite serial terminal Let's say Hi How do you do? Let's send. Now we can query it first using uart.any. And it returns 20 characters, which is the number of characters available in the serial receive port, which could include the line feed and the carriage return characters. And to receive it, just type uart.read. And as you can see, this is the message from the termite serial terminal. Now let me demonstrate to you reassigning the UART RX and TX pin to other pins other than the dedicated pins. Let me transfer the RX pin from GPIO 16 and GPIO 17 to GPIO 5 and 18, which is just in the right side of the ESP32. Let me transfer it. Okay. First, let's query again the UART so that we have the record for comparison. And as of now, it is still in 16 and 17 GPIO. So, now let's call the uart.init function. Let's set the rx to 5, equal to 5, and the tx equal to 18. Hit enter. And let's query the uart. And as you can see, the tx and rx pin is changed or reassign to other pins. Let me clear this first. And let's test it by sending uart. That right. Let's say hello from ESP32. Okay, it's working. Now let me revert back to the previous pin assignment which is the depot now for example number one let's try to use our current knowledge of UART to create something in hardware let's say we control 
the state of the onboard LED by sending a command. Let's import the machine module. Import machine. Let's create an LED object we are going to control using the UART commands. Using LED is equal to machine. That pin, which is connected to GPIO2, let's set the pin direction using the machine. That pin, that out. Now let's create the UART object using the UART class of the machine module. UART is equal to machine that UART using port number 2 with a baud rate of 115,200. And let's just use all other default settings. Let's create a global variable here. Let's name it string message equal to blank. Here, we can create a main loop using the while true. Inside the main loop, let's check if there is data available in the serial using the UART that any is more than zero. And if it's true, Let's store the characters to a string message. String message is equal to uart.read. Let's also print the received characters for debug or demo purposes. So print string message. Now we can also check if the received characters contain a command. By checking the specific command, let's say, string on, using the if on in string message. And if it's true, let's turn on the onboard LED using LED.on. Let's reply using the uart.write. Let's say turning turning on LED. Let's also print in the REPL the same. Let's also check the OP command. Let's say L if OFF in string message. Let's turn off the LED. We reply to the UART. Let's say turning off LED. Let's also print in the REPO. Else, if no command is string found, Let's just reply uart that write invalid command. That's also the print to the repo. Let's save it in computer as t 13 underscore ex01 let's call it simple uart dot pi let's run it and let's see if we can control the led state using uart command line 8 Oh, if, let's save again, and let's run, and let's see, as of now, the onboard LED is off, let's send a command on, what happened, I will check the pins, maybe it's not connected properly, 
I just sorted it out. I just found out that my DuPont wires are loose and no more reliable. I end up removing the breadboard and use another set of DuPont wires which are uh, female to female DuPont wires. Let's run it and see if we can control the onboard LED using a serial command. So let's try to send an on, an on string. And as you can see, the onboard LED turns on. Let's try to turn it off by sending off. Okay. And as you can see, it replies also in the serial terminal and in the repo. Let's turn it on again. On. Nice. Off. Okay. On again. Okay. I hope you learned something. Now just for fun, let's have a simple assignment. So here it is. In the else part of the if statement here, I want you to reply and print the actual command sent. For example, if I send another command, let's say execute, I want you to extract the execute string. So now, when I send execute, the reply is invalid command. I want you to extract the string execute so that we can display it. Please do comment your answer. Please don't be shy. My solution could be found in the companion blog post of this video. So, yeah. That's all for now. If you have any question regarding this tutorial, you may write your inquiry in the comment box provided. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me thumbs up by clicking the like button and share this to your friends so that it can reach more people who might benefit from this. And if you are not yet subscribed, please do subscribe now. You might also like to visit my blog post at techtothinker.blogspot.com for more details and references such as circuit diagram and source code. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.